What's up, Joe? What's up, everybody? Today's guest on Sports 360 is Richard Giller, an insurance recovery attorney specializing in insurance coverages and claims in the sports and entertainment industries. With the postponement or cancellation of many sporting and cultural events around the world due to the coronavirus pandemic, the issue of event cancellation insurance has become an important one. Of course, the main issue we face as a global society right now is one of public health and safety. That will always come first. Yet there is no disputing the massive economic losses caused by the spread of this virus. Richard will share his knowledge on event cancellation insurance generally and how business entities with such coverage can best position themselves to pursue successful claims. As we continue to navigate every phase of these unprecedented times, this is an important discussion and it's coming up next on Sports 360. Joining me today on Sports 360 is Richard Giller. Richard is an insurance recovery partner in the Los Angeles office of the global law firm Pillsbury Winthrop Shaw Pittman. Richard specializes in sports and entertainment insurance coverages and claims, and he joins us for the second time on Sports 360. During his first visit, Richard spoke with us about loss of value insurance for collegiate and professional athletes. Today, Richard joins us to talk about event cancellation insurance, which is an important topic in the midst of the current coronavirus pandemic. Richard, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? And thanks for having me back. I know it's kind of a unprecedented time in the sports world in history and i and quite frankly in the insurance world as well yeah no question about it and i'm glad to have you back uh, to talk about um, an important topic given what we're going through right now but before we start talking about invent event cancellation insurance and all the related issues there how are you and yours uh, out there on the west coast you know what? We're doing quite well. I um, I've always taken the approach with this pandemic that you know this too shall pass, and hopefully it's not a long protracted um, and involved situation. Um, I was I was just looking up statistics this morning, and there are 3,300 cases in 49 states in the U.S. and 65 people dead. But if you take it sort of a broad perspective of it. You know, we have a population of about 331 million. That means that like one one hundredth of the population has contracted the disease so far. So let's hope uh, living in the best healthcare country in the world and, and advanced medicine here that it stays relatively low and, and impacts few people and, and there are a lot fewer deaths than anticipated. Yes, I mean, that, that certainly is the hope. And you know, uh, governments have, you know, various states have taken, you know, various measures to try to slow the spread of the virus, uh, including the cancellation of large gatherings, which has resulted in Major League Baseball, the NBA, NHL, and a host of other sporting events, NCAA, canceling major events, concerts, cultural events being canceled. So, there's a lot going on on a very large scale. And then on a smaller scale, you see many businesses closing, encouraging their workers uh, to work from home uh, to try to, again, slow the spread of the virus, which leads us to having you on the show today because of the suspension of certain events and cancellation of others. So why don't we jump into it, Richard, and, and talk about event cancellation insurance. The name sort of suggests what it is, but why don't you tell us generally 
how does event cancellation work? What is it and how does it work? Well, thanks for the opportunity. Um, the, the first premise that we start with is event cancellation is normally a separate insurance policy as opposed to like a rider or an endorsement onto another type of policy. Uh, companies, nonprofits, uh, sports teams, entertainment companies have the opportunity anytime they want to, to purchase an event cancellation insurance policy. And the policy is a little different than a lot of policies in that it's a policy that covers sudden and ex unexpected causes, any type that are beyond the policyholder's control, unless that unexpected event is specifically excluded in the policy. So in other words, it's a pretty broad grant of coverage. Um, so it's, it covers anything that's unexpected and out of the policyholder's control, unless there's an exclusion. And, you know, a lot of these policies have 10 to 20 listed exclusions for anything like other conditions, lack of funding, lack of audience, you know, response, war, terrorism, radiation, a bunch of things like that. Um, so it, it's, it's pretty easy. And, and what it does is it, it covers the expenses already incurred to promote the event. Um, and it also covers the loss of gross revenue, sometimes it's called net profits, that would have been earned if the event had taken place. And the insured, I usually say the policyholder because insured and insurer often get mixed up. So the policyholder can satisfactorily prove his losses and they cover those. Um, and the event and the policies can be called event cancellation. They, they can cover cancellation, curtailment, postponement, abandonment, non-appearance, and some policies cover relocating an insured event if one of those happens. Um, so it's basically cancellation or postponement coverage. And, and the coverage, in, in the situation we're in now with the spread of the coronavirus, the coverage would include or could include communicable diseases, infectious diseases as well? Yeah, so just from a um, broad legal standpoint, uh, one thing everybody should remember if they purchase one of these types of policies is grants of coverage are broadly construed in favor of the policyholder and exclusions are strictly construed against the insurance company. So the wording of a particular exclusion is critically important. One, is there an exclusion that exists? And two, how is it worded? So some policies actually have an exclusion for communicable diseases, which given the language of the exclusion could apply to exclude coverage. Others exclude the threat or the potential threat of uh, a communicable disease. While well, sometimes that's that additional language not included. I'm currently in the process of helping out on a number of event cancellation insurance questions and claims, and I've reviewed a number of policies that don't have a communicable disease exclusion. Before January 28, 2020, you, uh, policyholders could purchase additional coverage to cover communicable diseases by endorsement or rider. But once January 28th of this year hit, pretty much every insurance company in the world started issuing specific exclusions for the coronavirus. Um, SARS and avian flu exclusions had existed previously, but now there's a specific coronavirus exclusion. So if somebody was trying to get coverage now, they wouldn't be able to. Hmm. And, and in terms of the entities that, that would have coverage, I mean, is it safe to assume that, you know, the NBA and the major sports leagues, uh, major events like March Madness, that they would have such coverage in place? Well, I, I've talked to a couple of insurance brokers. I know that that sell the policies in the space. And uh, I was told that some of the leagues carry event cancellation insurance for the entire season. Some leagues carry it for specific events like an all-star game or the Super Bowl. Um, and then there are some instances where the sports teams, teams themselves carry their own event cancellation insurance, whether or not the league carries it as well. Because if you think about it, if, and I'm, you mentioned I'm in the, um, the Los Angeles office of Pillsbury, if the Dodgers have to cancel part of the season or, or postpone it for a certain period of time, 
it's not just a league revenue issue. It's it's a Dodger revenue issue. They they lose out on ticket sales. They lose out on concessions. They lose out on parking, advertising. I mean, there's all sorts of damages that are specific and individual for the teams themselves. The league may have damages with ad revenue and network television contracts and failing to deliver, you know, 82 games for the NBA, for example. Um, and it's interesting, the, the San Jose Mercury News had a great article this morning that analyzed the Bay Area teams and how much they made per game. For example, the Giants made $2.44 million per game last year, home games. Um, and the Warriors, about $3.5 million per game. Obviously, the Warriors only have 41 home games as compared to 81 for the Giants. But, you know, if these are not insignificant numbers. The San Jose Sharks... 1.6 million per game. Even the uh, uh, MLS Earthquakes team did 1.24 per game. Uh, not shockingly, the Athletics were the least profitable huh. team and only took home right. 1 million per game. But but those are some big numbers when you multiply them by 41 or 81 or you know 17 games for soccer, and you know th- that's pretty big. The other thing you take into account is. As I understand it, March Madness uh, accounts for about 90% of the NCAA's revenues. Uh, And so the economic impact on canceling those games is going to be dramatic and will have an impact for not just next season, but for you to come, most likely. No question about it. And and Richard, um, you know, my experience with insurance uh, and I think most everyday people have a similar experience with their insurance company is that when, if you are fortunate enough to get a claim to be paid, many times it's a portion of the damage. Um, uh, and, you know, I remember back in one of the storms hit and it did some damage to my home and we got a portion of the damage. Um, same thing with car insurance. I mean, and I'm not even talking about deductibles necessarily, but there are times when you're not getting 100% of the claimed damage. Um, would, is that, would that be the way it would typically work with event cancellation insurance? Again, you're talking very large numbers here, as you just said. So what are teams or what would they expect if they were successful in filing a claim here? Yeah, so that's a great question, and there are several parts to the answer. First of all, insurance companies are more than happy to take your premium payments, and they're not thrilled Mm -hmm. when they have to pay out on a claim. So part of the claims part of uh, the insurance company world is to limit their damages. So you're right. You have to sometimes fight tooth and nail to get 70, 80, 90% of a a claim covered. but as our law school professors like used to like to tell us, Jeff, um, when you ask them a question, it you know the question is always it depends. <laughs> right. In the insurance world, the the key phrase is it depends on the policy language, and it's critical. I mean, the the placement of a comma or a semicolon in an insurance policy can make all the difference between coverage and a non-covered event, and so you know it's a complex area of the law and it's not just another contract some lawyer can can you know review and give you an opinion on it's a very specific type of contract and there are specific rules that come into play when interpreting them um, it's probably anticipated or you can people can anticipate that you know not 100 percent of all claims are going to get paid and and you know i've talked to some people in the industry and they think this issue is going to be significantly more complex, difficult, and longer lasting than insurance claims arising out of 9-11. This is unprecedented in the insurance world. And, you know, it wasn't until March 11th that the World Health Organization declared it a global pandemic. I was reviewing a policy today, and the language had a communicable disease exclusion, but then it had an exception to the exclusion, which is one of these weird insurance only type of contract interpretation things if you have an an exclusion that says no coverage for communicable disease but then they accept out part of it carve out part of it and in this instance it was that exclusion only applies if they're the world health organization or some federal government or agency 
issues a, a declaration of a epidemic or a pandemic, then coverage is reinstated for that. Or is coverage is only excluded if, if the pandemic has been declared. Well, interestingly, of course, the question then arises, if I canceled an event on March 10th that wasn't going to take place until July 10th, does that exception to the exclusion huh. mean I have coverage or does it mean that the it only applies to the events that were taking place before the uh, pandemic was declared? And so it's a very tricky area. And, and as an insurance recovery lawyer, my view is, you know, you notify all your carriers of a claim, you tell them they you think it's covered and you let them come back and tell you if they think it's not. And then then that's where our a lawyer like I can step in and, you know, pursue coverage and, and, and craft arguments why claims exist. You know, I mentioned earlier the grant of coverage is, uh, is interpreted broadly and exclusions narrowly. So in my analysis here, I would say if the insurance company didn't spe specify that it was the exception to the exclusion only applied to events before the announcement, they should have written it that way. Because they wrote it the way they did, it should have it should apply to any cancellations that occurred before the announcement, and could apply to events that were scheduled to take place months later. Sure, that's that's interesting, and I want to get into in, in a little bit, you know, some of the particular things that an entity should be thinking about right now and doing right now in in the midst of what's going on with the cancellations and. And suspensions. And by the way, I think we need to, you know, draw that distinction, right? Because the NBA, the NHL, and Major League Baseball have suspended play. They have been canceled events, right? Unlike March Madness, which has been canceled. So I, I think it's fair to say, isn't it, that when it comes to the sports that have suspended play, we we still have to see what's going on first. I mean, see what happens. Let this unfold a little bit. Major League Baseball may be a little bit different because the spring training games have already been canceled, but they may be made up too because there may be a need for some additional spring training in order to get the players back into shape and ready for the regular season. But right now, is should we be looking at a difference between suspension and cancellation when we're talking about this insurance? Well, I think there's a difference whether it's insurance you know, connected or whether it's a broader issue. Um, I think the reason the, the league suspended or postponed play was because it didn't trigger the refund of season ticket holder uh, ticket sales. Um, whereas a postponement, if the games are played, you don't have to refund those. So the first part of your question is what should policyholders be doing now? And one of the things is keeping copious notes and document everything and compile as many documents and projections that you had before the outbreak and then after the outbreak and keep as much detailed information as possible. Because you mentioned the homeowner's claim. One of the things you know insurance companies often ask for is documentation. Show me the proof that you bought a laptop computer that was stolen. So you had the actual dollar amount. And so documenting everything is key at this point, documenting everything and notifying your insurance carriers that you have a possible claim is critically important. And, you know, Major League Baseball is a little different than the NBA and NHL. In basketball and hockey, the players, you know, they get a percentage of the revenue. So if the revenues go down, the players take a reduction. Um, Baseball doesn't have that kind of arrangement with its players association. You know, baseball, it'll be the owners who will bear the brunt of the losses if if there are postponement and cancellation losses and they're not insured. Um, and you know, another interesting thing is esports is is in its infancy. So, do any of the leagues or teams or or players in esports have any event cancellation coverage? I I tried to find that information and I can't find anything about it. I assume not because it's so new, but you know, it's possible. And the other part of your question, you know, baseball's in a different situation because its season hasn't even started. It wasn't even scheduled to start for what, 10, 10, 15 days from now. So 
it may still be able to have 162 games a season. It may be a lot different than they anticipated originally, and the schedules will have to be manipulated and changed. And and so they're going to be all sorts of expenses, um, you know, figuring out how season ticket holders' tickets now apply to particular games that either were canceled because the uh, postponement took place, you know, two, three, four weeks. Um, you also have all the extra expenses. What if you have to have them in different venues now? Um, and it, it's going to be a very interesting time in the insurance world and the sports world. And, and you know, you've got the, the human element of it too. It's not just the teams, the players, and the billionaire owners. All the parking attendants, all the ushers, all the people that sold concessions, a lot of part-time employees who, you know, supplement their income are going to be drastically impacted. And as a Los Angeles um, sports fanatic, I um, am very happy that uh, yeah, on Friday, the Lakers, Clippers, Kings, and AEG, who owns Staples Center, um, announced that they're finalizing details for a plan that would compensate all the part-time and contract workers uh, in when it, because of these cancellations and postponements. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that, that is great. And you, you know, Mark Cuban was, I believe the first one uh, that I heard say that he was going to take care of, you know, the arena workers in Dallas. And then you have players stepping up, Kevin Love in Cleveland, Zion Williamson in New Orleans, and you have other teams around the leagues as well making the same commitment, which is important because you're right. There is the human element. And, and, and it just shows, Richard, of how you know, the, the far-reaching effects of what we're going through right now with the coronavirus and the suspensions and the cancellations of games and of tournaments and things of that sort. But, you know, one of the things I've thought about, Richard, is, you know, in, in that regard, hotels and restaurants in, you know, in these cities where there are major events, for example, in Atlanta, scheduled to have the Final Four, and of course, along the way in the NCAA tournament in the regional and all the rest of it, where these events are held, the economic impact, the anticipated economic impact is important to those cities. And so in a place like Atlanta, with now the Final Four being canceled, um, would the hotels and restaurants in these areas have any kind of event cancellation insurance, you think? Well, it's possible. I mean, the hotels hold a number of conferences and trade shows and seminars. And and by the way, all the people who put on and promote those types of um, shows and, and conferences all have event cancellation, you know, issues as well. And many of them have their own insurance policies in that regard. So the promoters are, are insured. Hotels, you know, they're, they're, they rely on the income generated by these types of events. So um, it's possible that many hotels um, have this type of coverage one of the things that may be a little more difficult in the Atlanta scenario that you presented is proving what the anticipated, you know, occupancy, you know, nightly rates, restaurant charges, you know, room service charges, uh, valet fees. How do you project all that? It's not impossible. It's easy to have a CPA or, or somebody, a forensic accountant come in and look at, you know, what other cities and, and other that held the final fours in other years, you know, made off of those. But, you know, it trickles down even further. Uber drivers aren't going to have as many um, rides as they might have in Atlanta. You know, the restaurants sure. are going to suffer. Bars and uh, and clubs are going to suffer as well. It's, it's it, The economic impact of this is going to be far-reaching and, and, you know, it's unknown. It's it, It'll be years before anybody really gets a handle on how much impact it actually had. I'm glad you said that because as as I was sitting here listening to your your comments, that's exactly what I was thinking, Richard. That you know, look, this look. Hopefully, this all ends soon, right? And you know, we can 
you know, shake hands again and high five again and, you know, watch the games again and return to our normal life, whatever normal is. But in trying to sort of clean up the landscape here, depending upon how long this plays out, I was thinking that this for the insurance, um, for the insurance industry and for those who are policyholders, this seems to me to be very complicated and could be a a tangled web that takes a long time to 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 smooth out. I agree completely, and you know, at the risk of self promotion, insurance recovery lawyers are critically important in this type of situation because because it's unprecedented. You need somebody with a really strong, specialized background in insurance, and 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 the topics we're talking about today, sports insurance especially, is, is really important to have a understanding of how the CBAs work in each of the leagues and how those might impact claims. Um, you know, when Tom Hanks was, it was revealed that he has coronavirus, uh, the movie he was filming, which is an Elvis Presley biopic, I think, uh, with Warner Brothers in Australia, they immediately shut down operations. And so the entertainment world, while they don't have event cancellation coverage, they do have cast insurance, which usually covers the extra expenses. You know, if one of the actors has an accident or falls ill or dies, and it it reimburses the production companies or the studio for the downtime, the extra expenses, the, and in some instances, they cover the abandonment of of the film or the TV show. Um, you also have workers' comp coverage that might come into play. There is something in the entertainment world known as essential element coverage, which ensures against the loss of a particular director or a key actor. And and that, you know, the entertainment part of this equation also leads me to something I've been thinking about, which is in times of, you know, uh, emergencies and, and difficult times in the United States, one of the things that citizens do is we like to go to the movies or watch sports as a way to, you know, keep us occupied and, and enjoy parts, even though it, it's a difficult time. I think, you know, Major League Baseball played a, a big part in healing the country after 9-11. Uh, right. it, was, it was essential. And we don't have that. There's not that escape for us. We, we can't turn on TV and watch the Masters in a couple of weeks or or watch the NCAA tournament. All the, uh, I was scheduled to, to go to Las Vegas to attend an event that was all about March Madness, and that's canceled. And so you don't have that, like, I don't know, the escape, I guess, is the best way to phrase it. Yeah, I mean, here in North America, you know, right now, this the, the spring is a very special time in sports, right? Because we have the NBA and the NHL closing out their seasons and getting ready for the playoffs. You have spring training and then the start of the baseball season. Of course, you have March Madness, which everyone looks forward to uh, who are basketball fans, especially college fans. Uh, And as you said, then you have the Masters. And so you have all of these events. It's an exciting time traditionally this time of the year. And the sports landscape has gone dark. And so, yeah, you're absolutely right for Joe Fan, um, who, you know, and I include myself in, 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 among, you know, in, in that definition of Joe Fan, right? I'm Joe, you know what I mean? And yeah. I, 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 you know, like watching March Madness and all the rest of it. And it's going to be, it's going to be different. Uh, it's going to be a different time. And so, um, yeah, it is all interesting. But, Rich, I want to go back to something you said. You know, you said at a risk of self-promotion. No, I think it's important. One of the reasons why I wanted to have you on today is because this is an important topic. Uh, you are knowledgeable and, and, and you know, uh, expert in this area. I'm calling you that anyway. Um, and so I think it is important because anyone who's dealt with an insurance company, even if it's just an auto claim, You understand how difficult it can be. And so when we talk about the complexity of these types of claims, I believe it's vital that every entity has the best help available and the best information available. And I believe you're providing some good information here today. 
Well, I appreciate that. And, and I think you know me well enough to know that I'm the type of person that if someone just has a general question, I'm happy to answer anybody's questions. I don't need to open a new file to help out a fellow, our fellow man in, in answering some of these, you're right, complex and unique questions. Um, but they are very fact specific, policy wording specific, and, and it requires somebody with the right type of knowledge and understanding of these issues. And if you've ever attended a, a seminar or a conference I've given, I always like to tell people that if I'm at a cocktail party and I tell someone that I'm an insurance lawyer, everybody starts walking away from me because they don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> the minute, <laughs> But the minute I say I sue insurance companies for a living, somehow everybody comes back and everybody has a car insurance uh, story or a homeowner story, health insurance issue, and, and everybody has dealt with insurance companies not paying their claims at all or less than 100%. And, and so it's, it's, it's an important area where, you know, a good insurance recovery lawyer can make all the difference in the world. Yeah. And I will say this, you know, to your comment of, you know, your willingness to help. You know, I go back, Richard, to when you and I first met by phone and, and we haven't met in person yet. And we've spoken by phone numerous times. Um, and I was doing research at the time on loss of value insurance uh, for professional athletes. And I got your name as a reference. And you got on the phone with me, was gracious with your time, and then started sending me all kinds of materials to help me in my research. So I just, you know, throw that in there or add that in there as a testament. I know for a fact that when you say, yeah, hey, you, you'll be helpful if someone picks up the phone. Um, I, I know that's true. Um, and so um, I, that, I, I add that out there for those who are listening. Um so Richard, so if as we as we sort of wrap this up, there's a lot of uncertainty now. Things are changing, can't even say by the day. Sometimes it seems by the minute. And so we don't know where we're headed. We don't know how long we're going to be in the current situation, if it gets better or worse, and when that will happen. So again, if you were to sort of sum up and, and for those who are affected by this entities, businesses that are affected by this, who may have and who do have a an event cancellation policy, just tell us again the things that certainly these entities should be doing right now to position themselves to successfully pursue a claim at the appropriate time. Well, first of all, thanks for the kind words. And then and then secondly, the the key here is gathering your insurance policies up and having someone review them. I've, I've been reading way too many articles saying things like South by Southwest doesn't have insurance to cover this because they didn't purchase communicable disease coverage. But again, it depends on the wording of their policy. I don't know what their policy says, but if it says communicable disease, and they have an argument that it wasn't a communicable disease that caused the cancellation of South by Southwest this year, but say an order from the city of Austin prohibiting gatherings of more than a thousand people, that was the cause. There could be an insurance claim. So don't just take somebody's, you know, word, a broker or somebody else saying, you know, you don't have coverage for this. It needs to be analyzed on a deep level. That's critical. And then you also have to collect and keep all of your documentation as to how much you spent on the event so far, what monies have gone in, uh, maintaining you know copious notes and detailed financial records, and putting it in one place, and then a place that's protected and safe. Um, because documenting your loss is going to be a big part of how much you recover in the long run. Um, you know, and in some instances, you would say insurance companies. Given the human and ethical elements we've been talking about today, should think a couple times or at least five or six times about whether they're going to deny claims outright or whether they're going to, you know, up to the plate and help those who are suffering the most in this situation as well. So it all kind of plays hand in hand, but I think gathering the information, having somebody review the policies to determine whether or not coverage exists, and um, 
maintaining an open line of communication because the fluidity of the situation is is crazy. I mean, once um, Manfred uh, canceled the season or postponed the season, all the other dominoes started to fall, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, um, and, and look, we, we don't know, again, where we're headed and how long we're going to be in the current situation and how it's going to develop. But um, certainly we have to keep an eye on it in, in all kinds of ways, you know, first and foremost, because of, you know, the health of, of, of our nation, right, um, and the citizens of our nation, and not just here, of course, around the world. Um, and then, you know, in terms of uh, the athletes themselves, you know, what, getting them back to playing and fans who attend these games and so on. Um, and, and, you know, and the impact that it's having economically uh, right now, it's, it's, it's impossible to calculate until we go through this and, and come out of it. But, um, you know, the insurance aspect of this, as you said, maybe people run away from you at the cocktail parties or whatever, but <laughs> it may not be the sexiest topic in the world, but it certainly is important. And at a time like this, um, it is one of the important considerations as well. And so I'm glad to have had you on the show today to shed some light on this important topic. Anytime I can help, Jeff, I'm happy to. And, and again, thank you for the opportunity because your podcast reaches a great number of people. So hopefully some people will hear it and something in this podcast will help them in some way. Yep, that's the hope. That's the hope. So uh, Richard Giller, thanks for coming on today. And I'm sure we'll be in touch. Thank you, Richard. Thanks, Jeff.